And we do have different last names because we're adopted, but we grew up together, if that makes any sense. Uh, our third partner is Kira, Kira Cobb. And so Kira and I were like the twins in the household, single mother household. And Kevin was like a single child in a, a household with a mother and father. So we had these big mixed families. So he was growing up on the farm and we were growing up like in this little urban area adjacent to North Little Rock. It, it offered for a very diverse uh, set of experiences. That was a part of our family culture too. Everybody had, everybody, big mom, my grandmama, had a, a garden in their backyard. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was just, that was the norm. Yeah. Had fruit trees in the front, you know what I'm saying? In the yard, you can go pick fruit. And it was, that was just a part of us being outside, a part of nature. And with the onset of technology, we really, Falling away from that, mm -hmm. so we didn't have to buy greens. Remember? Right. Yeah. We, we never had to buy greens growing up. Right. Mother always had greens. Yeah, greens. So and so bringing me some greens. Everyone had greens. We didn't have to go to the store. Greens. Why? I didn't even know they sell, sold greens at right. the store. It was weird. Really, when we were <laughs> right. little. Yeah. Food was abundance yes. then. Yes. And so I guess that's my segue into how I got started because food was not abundant. Right. Um, yeah. I, here I am, a single mom. Uh, my son is almost an adult. And after being in Dallas for almost 20 years, I moved back home. And I remember the day that I had to choose between a pack of hot dogs and some gas in the car to take him to school. And it was a rude awakening. I mean, I had been into gardening for a while, but I didn't take it serious. Like I can make money with this. I can feed myself and my family. It was just something to do. So I'm walking through the grocery store and I see all these beautiful vegetables and fruits and greens and I'm like this should be free to me it's growing out of the ground and so we just industrialized a human right to eat and that's when I made the decision I'm gonna grow cook eat and repeat my food from now on and teach other low-income single mothers or fathers or just would-be people who want to be more sustainable and independent how to do it as well the grow operative is a co-op or a grow op a grow operative and it's a conglomerate of would-be or fellow gardeners and urban farmers and after gardening for so long and then uh, wanting to monetize what I was doing and on a lot of other people who just garden and want to monetize what they're doing I started the formal process of becoming a, an urban farmer where I was at my home in my backyard and studying value-added products and things like that according to USDA and then now, just we evaluated what I needed and what we needed as gardeners. It was hard to source wood for garden beds, soil. Sometimes uh, plants and seeds can get expensive. Right. So as a grow up, we provide that to our members and friends. We have a portion of the grow up and uh, sacred grove and uh, a segue portion of what uh, I do too as well. Uh, to help people have, get greenhouses, they don't have to be this big, they can be of any size. As long yeah. as you have an enclosed space where you can control those variables, uh, we bringing that to rural farmers and low income people to get them to see that it's not that hard. We're building greenhouses in Pine Bluff, Arkansas, which is, a, yeah. a, you know, the culture of gardening is very tranquil. So it, it, when people are exposed to it, it can actually change the culture of that entire area. Mm -hmm. Where when you get food from where you're from, it's it's it uh we're tied to the land in a sense. Yes, so it's it's a better uh, quality of food, and mm -hmm. if, if you pick it fresh, the potency of whatever is in that plant is there. It's not you know yeah. um, fading or that's true half life and all. Yeah. You know yeah really especially like herbs. If you think you can't grow anything, grow some herbs. Yeah. Oh my God, yeah, lemon time. Saying. It Mint. comes back every year. Yeah. Mint will go all over the place and just love on you and smell good. And like Sis said, some, it's a lot of stuff that are, is growing in your yard that people think are, are weeds, like dandelion. Dead and, nettle. And, and, and you can just get a shovel or whatever, put it in the pot, and it's going to grow. It'll, and it's nutritious. Right, and it'll come back every year. So there's really no such thing as a brown thumb. Oh. There's, you can, you, you can grow something. Yeah, you can grow something. I mean, just just try it, I, you know. Don't knock it till you try it, you know. You can, you can grow, it's, it's it's going to grow itself, so you don't even have to worry oh, about yeah. it. Yeah. Something, yeah. Some things will. You, you have to find a plant that fits your personality. You know what I'm saying? That's a good one, too. <laughs> right. 
Yeah, that's a good one too. <laughs>